Well, how do I sound today? I bet I sound pretty good thanks to our friend Jameson from Sennheiser. I mean, he sent us these brand new mics and stuff because he noticed that our stuff was all worn out, but it was still work good. Same stuff, but it still worked good. So we really have to thank him. We're sounding great again. Let me show you what I've got going on here on Orca right now. That's the scarf that we did last week right there. And, uh, you know, it is a scarf, and it's got a reinforcement piece inside of it. So that's pretty cool, and you saw all about it, how we did it with the drawer tight and everything. This is quite a bit different situation here, so this one's going to be quite a bit different. And uh, first off, we had to get the angle right. So, you know, we're not on the loft floor here. I'm just picking this stuff off a drawn and, and, and setting it up up here. And I'm old. I don't want it down on the floor. I want it up here. So the next thing for me to do is connect the stem to the forefoot. And uh, it's a little bit different kind of a joint. They keep changing as you go. One was straight. This one's got a little curve in it. And this one's like not 90 degrees, but it's, it's sharp. So this one's going to be a touch different. I'll show you how I'm going to go about it. Well, I've got a string stretched along the bottom side of the keel here, and it's tied off to a clamp on the timber over there. Happened to be just the right height with the sawhorse, so I'm going to give the string a little pluck here, and you can see it returns to the same spot every time. The reason for this setup that I've got here with the string and the sawhorse and stuff is to extend the straight line of the keel. I'm out to decide what angle to put the stem on. But uh, the keel's got a little bit of an angle on it, so I'm trying to refer to the baseline with a degree and a half off this line, like this. So whatever I do to that, I have to subtract that from it. So I've got to have this stem out about four and a half degrees, and then when I rise the boat up and put the keel in the right angle, the stem will be at three degrees. That's what I'm looking for. Now, to make sure I'm set up right here, I have to parallel this leg to the string. And I've tightened the string up quite a bit, so that'll help. But I'm just going to tap that up there. And tap this up next to the string. That's touching. It's probably not tricky to get it exactly in the right spot, but that's parallel to the string right there. And I'm going to tighten the clamp down so it doesn't move. And that's without moving the sawhorse. Now, I'm going to take a yardstick and put it in the corner right here. Zero and bring it out to four and a half degrees and see where it points. Oh, look at that, same place as last time. That's where I drew the line right there. Just back here out of the way. First, I get to take my chainsaw and have some fun with that. I'm gonna follow this line I've drawn on there as close as I can, and uh, I've got the chainsaw sharpened properly to do the job. I've got it almost sharpened straight across, so it doesn't pull to the sides very much at all. You can actually follow a line with it. You'd be surprised how accurate you can be with a chainsaw like this. You know, it's bumpy if it's shopping 30 degrees or 25 degrees across, but this is cutting nice and smooth. It's hard to cut with any kind of saw when you're not just approaching it like that without the saw cutting on both sides. You know, it's mostly cutting on one side until you get in a little bit deeper and then it's even more control, really, because it's not bouncing around and trying to bounce away from the line. So, you know, it, it requires some, uh, some finesse, I guess, but the idea is, is that it actually saves a bunch of work because I don't have to transport this thing. And, uh, you know, to smooth up from the chainsaw, well, that's no problem either. I'd have to do that anyhow if I cut it with a bandsaw. We're trying to get it the right shape and approach angle, really, to the corner here. It's going to change as it goes right around the corner where it's connected to the stem. But th this is just kind of to get the whole forefoot a little bit more curved, and uh, it's going to do it. It's still cross cuts, but it's a little aggressive cross cutting, and uh, it doesn't cut a very wide slot. So it's not the best thing for like firewood cutting or anything like that. But I can scrub it with the side of the chainsaw to get it really nice and square. As long as the chain is fairly tight, Mainly, I'm taking material off the bottom here because I've drifted a little tiny bit. And I'm, I'm sure that I expected that because, like I had said before, drifting in there or trying to get into the cut is the hardest part. So, you know, I just take the tip of the chainsaw and scrub that out. It's the fastest and easiest way to get that into control right there. Right there. Close. Got a little bit more. Close. Close. It's all close, but it's not there yet. Pretty soon I'm going to be cutting a rabbit in these timbers, one end to the other, 
and I'm going to make a guide system to kind of clamp on or bolt on to the saw, you know, that guides one side of it while I'm looking at a line on the other side. So it's, it's going to work out pretty cool. I think in the past, people would have loved to have cane saws when they were building most of the big ships because it's pretty obvious that uh, they're very, very capable. Look what kind of a job you can do with a chainsaw right there. It's probably surprising to some people. It's even surprising to me, but uh, I think if I had a lot of big, heavy work to do in shipbuilding or something like that, that chainsaws would be something you just have to use today. Let's see, the rabbit mine will be either back here or here. It ships over. So the stop will be on this section. I just want this to be... Like that. Perfect. So I'm going to bring this into position right here like this. That's where it's going to be, like that. But I'm going to bob this end off right here because it's going to have to fit in this little slot right here. You know, it's just like an open notch, but when I bolt it, it'll keep the two, never mind pulled together, but it keeps them lined up this way at the same time because that, those 90 degree cuts in there won't allow the thing to twist. So that's an improvement, really, on a standard uh, setup like this with a gripe. Now I've got my nice seven-point handsaw, and I'm going to use that. I sharpened it myself, so it doesn't drift around, but like everything else, especially boring holes, you have to start off exactly right because I don't have a whole lot of set in it, and if you don't start off right, it'll be binding through the entire cut. So you start off right and you end up right. And uh, the other thing is, you know, this is a couple small cuts. I don't have to really be aggressive and try to go as fast as I can go. It's really more important that I be nice and accurate than that I get there in like a minute. So, you know, I'm being conservative about how much power I'm putting behind it, but I'm being as close as I can be to the line. Now, I am coming at it from both sides, but I have to be really careful I don't go past the corner right here because this is a joint that's going to be seen all the time so you know it has to be accurate if i don't saw past the corner i can saw as close as i can get to it and then i'll just take a little pin mall and swat that piece right out of there here's our cutout right here for the stem to fit into and uh you know i i didn't follow the line exactly well so this needs a little bit of planing and i have to plane this corner out right here but i didn't want to get too close to that thing with the corner because you go by and you can see it, it would just be ugly. So we're trying to do a nice, neat job. And when you do that, you need a little forgiveness. You have to work on the side of, I don't know what you call it, error or something so that. So, and then I'm just gonna. I'm going to get a rabbit plane. This is the pattern that I use to make the curved bottom part of the stem and the forward part of the forefoot. And uh, I'm just sticking it in here. I'm going to trace this right here and uh, cut that off. That's going to be my little pattern for the end of the other piece. Now I'm going to make this little cut as sweet as I can make it because the better this cut is, the better the cut on the stem will be. It's just going to save a lot of work and scraping to get the joint to work nice and tight. Now I'm just going to take my little pattern and put it on there. It's not much of a pattern, but it's just a little tiny thing. Just to get that. Now I'm going to cut that right off there. Marking something like this out is a little technical because uh, if you don't have the timber perfectly square to start, the whole thing's going to come out wrong. You could square all the way around the timber 90 degrees, but when you start making angle cuts like this, you can just be miles off. So the marking is as important as the cutting, and uh, both combined, you'll do as good a job as you can. Near the end of the cut here, I'm going to kind of slow down on how much pressure I put on it, because I don't want to chip the other side out. So that makes it so that I can get a nice tight fit all the way across. I'm going to put some nice soft lead on the sides of my eraser shield here, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with it, because it works out really good. Check this out. And I'll show you what it does. I'm going to put it down and rub it. Look, it hits all the high spots. It's so easy you can tell, you know, these are microscopic high spots right here. 
you know, if you had a big lump, say if you had a big lump, it would deposit something on top of the lump, but not around it, so you'd know what, what's up. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now I've placed that in between the two pieces, and I'm going to slide it around like that, and it, it will deposit lead on the tightest spot. I can tell it's right there because you can feel it. Inside there, it's pretty cool. Down here, not bad. Right here. So now when I take that apart, you should see some lead deposited on both pieces. Then I can decide which piece I want to trim up in order to get it to fit. One of them's got a lump in it somewhere. It's either that one or that one. There's only two. So now this one over on here. You know, it's got a little bit of deposit of lead right here. Now I should be able to take my finger and run over that and feel whether or not that's a hump. It is a little bit of a hump right there. Now this one over here, that one doesn't have it, so it's on this one right here. If I scrape that, and I think there's a little spot in the back corner right here. So this is just a paint scraper. Look at the medullary rays just show up when I scrape it. Vertical lines right straight across the annual rings. There's one little spot right back here, and I'm going to take the corner off. Now we're just going to touch up the other side, and then see how it fits. I'm going to apply a brace right there from the forefoot to the stem, so it controls the angle of the stem as I'm fitting it. You know, this is what I would call the gripe right here, the piece that goes in here, but this might be called the gripe area. It really doesn't matter too much what you call it, but there's all kinds of different ways to go about it, and I've kind of chosen a way that I like a lot, and uh, I haven't seen it done many times. I haven't even done it myself, but I really like it. See this line right here? This is basically the way most people would have done this like this in all kinds of different boats, whether we just butt this piece into this piece right there. You know, and there's nothing spanning it, no bolt through it or anything else. Well, I don't know. I didn't like that. I, I wanted to be able to bolt this piece to that piece. And then I changed the design of this and put a little corner in it right here because when you put a bolt through it, you can tighten the bolt right up and it pulls it right into that corner. It, it, it's, a, it's a pretty neat thing. Now we're going to put a hole right through there like that. And that's the proper angle. I want it to be pulling into this corner right here so it pulls this timber into that one nice and tightly. And uh, then I'm going to make sure it's opened up enough so it's nice and tight down here. And then I'm going to fit the gripe in it after that. And one thing really nice about this kind of joint, if you didn't have the plank and stabilizing it, uh, a, a, a joint like this one, you can twist the two pieces pretty easily. And if it's not bolted, which most aren't, they open up. And I mean, they open up bad. It's, it's embarrassing. I don't like it. I don't really want it to come out on the center on this end and on that end because I have to go by it with a bolt this direction. So I'm hoping it'll be a little off center. And then when I drill this hole, it'll be a little off center and they'll pass each other. So that's, that's the idea of that. And I'm going to have this way up near this corner right up here. It wouldn't even matter if it showed right there, because I could just, I, as a matter of fact, I think that's a cool idea. I'm going to do that. I'm going to have it so it comes out right here. What we're going to do right now is we're going to drill a hole like this, as long as that, and hopefully it'll come out where we want it. This is the bit we're going to use right here. This was out of a set of bits that was uh, bought recently for very little money. They had a pilot on them, they had a screw pilot on them and all kinds of different things and I basically designed this tip right here similar to a barefoot bit actually. So it, it, it drills really, really nicely just like a barefoot bit. So I'm going to show you that while I'm drilling. That'd be alright, like that, how's that? like a dream. You know, the thing is, is when you're trying to start, if the thing pulls you in, the bit bends and you move and it's a mess. 
you know, it, it, you can't have a pilot that pulls you to get started. You put a little counter sink or a little sink for, that you can put the bit in because it doesn't center itself. You can't start a hole with it. You drill a little hole, you stick it in the hole, you can line yourself up perfect, and you can start drilling, you can spin without drilling. Look. Now watch. You stop. Now I'm gonna let it go a little bit more. This Orca build is going to look exactly like the original in every way. There will be improvements in the construction of it. The material, first off, is way better. And then we're going to use bronze for all the bolting and everything because all the original Novi boats like this had galvanized steel. And when it deteriorates, it, it kind of ruins the wood all the way around it. So when you use bronze like this, you can actually replace it later on if you had. But we really want this boat to last. So, you know, we want it to be able to be worked on easily. And we want it to be made out of the best stuff that we can make it out of. Even after I remove the screw pilot, you can change the approach angle in two different ways. You can change it on the tip so it's not real aggressive. And uh, the striking face, you can change that quite a bit. And uh, the more you drop it down and make it pointy, the faster it wants to pull. Not necessarily a good thing, so you kind of stand that cut up a little bit more and a little bit more until it's aggressive exactly the way you want it. You can push in and pull out without stopping the drill. Look at this now. This is okay right here because I had to use every single bit of that drill bit to come out the other end. Otherwise, I would have had to move it up in the chuck or something like that. You don't see a whole board like this every day. You know, it's kind of contrary to the grain and it's long. So you have to have the right bit. I want it to be a little off center and it is a little off center about a drill thickness. That's it. So let me drop this little square line down here and see how we did. It is right about there. Well, we came out right on the money, and uh, it's amazing that you could come out that good. I, I, I'm really happy about that. It wouldn't have mattered if it came out over here or over here. It doesn't really matter. It, it was just an exercise in, in uh, trying to do the best you can, that's all. That's a 24-inch hole right there, and it's through odd grain. You know, the grain's 45 degrees kind of to the hole. You'd think it'd be drifting all over the place, but it doesn't drift. Those bits like that just go nice and straight. I think I can get down and take a peek through the hole and see how straight it actually is. Look at that. You can see one end to the other. I, if you held up fingers on the other side, I'd know exactly how many you had. Then I just make a little recess for the bolt uh, because I want it to land nice and flat. And I bang it in there and then I bang the bolt in there. Now, there's quite a bit of friction through that long of a hole, so you gotta tap it a little bit. Now that I've got that ready rod through there, just putting one of these union nuts on it because you can't strip them. And Straighten that thing right up. Boy, I'll tell you, that'll hold that joint together. Let's see what it looks like. Now, look how tight this came out, especially with that bolt coming through it. But that was fit with a scraper. And I'll tell you what, I'm never going to do it a different way because you can see the result of it. I've never been able to make a joint like that as tight as that. You know, I, I just haven't been able to ever accomplish it. Using a rabbit plane or a block plane, it, none of it. A, a chisel trying to, you know, chisel it nice and smooth. I finally went over to using a scraper. You know, I use a Red Devil scraper in just a handmade or homemade handle. And you can scrape things like that till they shine, you know, and then you get fits like that.